Happy Friday, Internet, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Hold on, hold on. Is this mic working? One, two, one, two. Okay, okay, we're in the money. We're in the money. This is my little humble abode here on YouTube. I am becoming experimental with my kind of content, trying to figure out what do I like posting and what do y'all like to see from me in particular. So if you're going to subscribe, subscribe for the vibe. And if you think I should be, you know, more popular on this space and you got to like the video at some point, you got to like the video at some point. Thank you for coming. It's Friday and I felt like hmm, I haven't posted in a while. Here's the thing about my videos. I just post whenever I feel the urge, but now that my mindset is in a better space, better I'm, I'm not where I need to be yet, baby, because I'm, I'm not even going to disturb my MacBook to show you the room. But let me tell you, ever since I got this MacBook, it has been problem after another. Like, nobody told me that the MacBook has become so complicated. Like, it has been annoying. But I usually post whenever I feel impassioned, right? And now my mindset is better. So I'm like, you know what? Let me do this YouTube thing, like, for real, for real, for real. Let me do this. Um, now I understand why these YouTubers get burnt out because it's like, you have to be consistent and like your passion isn't consistent. Like your fire isn't consistent. So I get it. Um, there are a lot of things that I wanted to talk about and there are things that other people are talking about that I'm just not huh, caring for, but there are some things like I wanted to talk about the police that came to see Gabby Petito and her Brian when they were fighting on the road. And I wanted to give some commentary on that because I was really disappointed in how they missed all the warning signs in Gabby's testimony. And then I didn't post and now I'm just like, Ugh, do I want to drug it back up? Is my opinion worth anything anymore now that everybody has given their opinion on it? You know, and then the Shane Dawson thing is back and it's like, I don't have enough thoughts on it to make a whole, you know, a whole ass video. So I don't know. Let's see if you like this. Um, this is where I get my drama news from. Unless I'm already active in it, I get it from Deaf Noodles. Why Deaf Noodles? Because he's, he's like a hodgepodge. He tells me all the things I need to know. Listen, I get my... YouTube and mainstream stuff from Deaf Noodles. And then when it comes to the black drama, because listen, black Twitter has its own drama mill. You know, black hip hop industry has its own drama mill. You know what I'm saying? Like there is YouTube drama. There's mainstream drama that sometimes intermingle and there's black entertainment drama and sometimes they all come together and sometimes they don't but I thought maybe people maybe this can be the best of both worlds maybe maybe reacting to deaf noodles content maybe that's something y'all want to see I don't know here's the other thing okay you subscribe for the vibe you like if the video is worthy and you comment so let me, like, that's where I get my feedback from. It's y'all's your, it's your comments. That's where I get feedback from. This. So please engage. <laughs> so I know what y'all want to see. Um, another update. The blonde wig came in. This is the blonde wig. And now I have to figure out how to put this on my head. So we finna get some, uh, we finna get some content. And now that I have the MacBook, I am going to use iMovie and edit something and maybe how I customize this wig as a girl who doesn't know how to do wigs, maybe that will be my first, my first piece of edited content in literally years. Anyway, happy Friday. Okay, let's, wa let's watch this together. Let's watch. And I'll share my thoughts on stuff. And I'll share a life update at the end. How about that? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if this is the kind of content the algorithm and the people want to see. 
Okay, go Deaf Noodles, go. Folks, we got a great show for you today, so let's jump into it. Irrelevant News. So they were having a conversation about jeans on The View yesterday, and Whoopi said she wanted to buy a pair, and then this happened. And when you get finished with those jeans and decide you don't like them, give them to me, I'm going to make two pairs. Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, oh Barbara. Okay, so That's Barbara Cochran from Shark Tank, oh. literally. Oh, babe. <gasps> Why? Miss Cock, Miss Barbara. The sh oh my god. That was so shady. Like, ooh. Hold up. I didn't know she was like that. Is that what she's always like? Hold up. Miss Barbara. Barbara Ka Cor Coran. Does she give shade? Hold up. Does she give shade on the regular? Wait, she speaks out after that. Okay, what's she, what's she I saying? I made a joke at Whoopi's expense, which I now realize wasn't funny. It sounds like Barbara Corcoran. I, I know. It, it. That's what it... Listen. The way she said it... Hold on, let's, let's finish. Really inviting a free-for-all. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Haynes and uh, Jill Biden wore that dress already on yeah. TV. That's yeah. not true. <laughs> Nothing like live television, huh? Actually, hold on, folks. Okay, whoever that lady was, good job trying to, you know, dispense the energy. Because Whoopi was looking like, <laughs> hold up, <laughs> hold up, you, you want to take this out, you want to take this outside? Okay, that lady was good at kind of trying to diffuse the tension. But no, the way she said it, she did say it like, like a joke. But here's the thing. Miss Barbara, and you know, Miss Barbara knows this. She's a businesswoman, so she knows this. It's not everybody that you can be jokey jokey. Like you don't have that kind of relationship. You know what I mean? Like you don't you you, you don't know Whoopi. You don't know Whoopi like that. You don't know you don't know Whoopi like that. Oh no, hold up. What did she say? Is making amends and apologizing for the comments she made about That's Whoopi nice. Goldberg's nice. body on the yeah. View during Barbara's appearance on the show. She and the rest of the co-hosts were chatting about a great pair of jeans when Whoopi made a comment about trying them on. They fit three. No. Two COVID bucks. <laughs> we'll be fine. Yeah. After Whoopi's remarks, Barbara made an. Okay, so Whoopi was making fun of her herself. She said, "You can fit two COVID butts." Is that what she said? That's what it sounded like to me. So it sounded like she was making fun of herself, and then Barbara kind of felt like, "Let me get in on the stroke." But you know, you and Whoopi ain't cool like that. You you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, Whoopi can make fun of herself, but you, 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 you. Insensitive joke that body shamed the longtime View co-host. And when you get finished with those jeans and decide you don't like them, give them to me, I'm going to make two pairs. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, 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 Barbara. Okay. It was after Barbara's comment that Anna Navarro came to Whoopi's defense by dishing out a diss of her own. Anna yes, came for Barbara's outfit. That, by that was good, girl. K kudos to her. Listen, that is the best... When you're in the heat of the moment and somebody says something kind of like an offensive joke, that is the best. Number one is to have somebody that's not you. If somebody's doing it to you, the best way is to have somebody who's not you come to your defense. Okay. Listen, I know there's some people who are like, oh, don't be captain, save them. But no, in this type of situation, you need a captain, save them. Okay. Because if you respond, first of all, you're hot. Okay, so we don't, you don't, you don't even know what's going to come out your mouth. Okay, second of all, it just makes it, 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 it doesn't make it look like, you know what I mean? It's good that this friend came out and did another jovial joke to diss her back. Okay, and then deal with it and then deal with the niceties afterwards. That, that, but that's in my opinion. Telling her that Sarah Hines and Jill Biden wore that dress on TV already. Ouch. <laughs> Not long after Barbara's appearance on The View, she went on Twitter to apologize for her comments since many social media users said they were so disappointed by the nasty jab. Barbara started off her message by explaining her relationship to Whoopi and sharing that they've known each other for years and that Whoopi has a phenomenal sense of humor. Mm. She then went on to apologize for the- I mean, Whoopi does. How well do y'all know each other though? When was the last time y'all talked? Because you know, people change over time or maybe, yeah, like you ever meet somebody or re-meet, see somebody that you knew growing up and it's not the same. Like there's some people that you could have not seen them for 10 years. You get back together. It's like old times. 
And then there's people who they're like, yeah, I haven't seen you in a long ass time. I don't know you. Case in point, Gabby Hanna. I haven't seen Jesse. I was her roommate five years ago. I don't know that girl. I don't know her. You know what I mean? That's how some people are. The comments she made on the show. I made a joke at Whoopi's expense, which I now realize wasn't funny. For anyone who I may have offended unintentionally, I just want to say I really am very sorry. However, fans weren't so quick to forgive Barbara for her remarks. And they, and they never are. Listen, when you do something offensive in the public space, especially these days, these days, yeah, people, people, the forgiveness... Really, the only time you should expect forgiveness, not expect, but the only time you're going to apologize and you'll see a lot of people forgive you is if you come out with the apology before the backlash comes. If you can come out with the apology before the backlash, a lot more people will feel like you're real. One user wrote, it's always so sad when someone screws up an otherwise perfect apology by saying some crap like, to anyone who I may have offended. It's not up for debate. You offended. You may or may not have intended to, but there's no doubt what you said was offensive, period. Thanks for watching E! News. Yeah. A and that's, a I mean, I, I get what she means, but yeah. I, I But I... I understand where her mind is at. Like, it wasn't funny. Maybe it would it would have been funny if Whoopi was in on the joke. It's it's the kind of joke that's only funny when everybody actually finds it funny. But mm -mm. so it's good that she apologized. She obviously is not trying to like stir up controversy. Okay, that was. <laughs> It was just the shade. It was just the fact that she even went there to shade. I was like, oh, God. Folks, I take that back because what Megan Trainer revealed on this podcast is a whole lot crazier. We just got a new house and we did construction. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows us, but in our bathroom, there was one toilet. And a lot of times in the middle of the night when we're with the baby, like we, we got to pee at the same time. So I was like, can we please have two toilets next to each other? So we. <laughs> I don't know why people are so shocked by this, folks. It's common knowledge that a family that poops together stays together. We got I'm two sorry. toilets sitting Excuse next to each other. Hold on. Now, I relate to the sentiment. Because I'm the kind of. Uh, <laughs> I'm the kind of girl in my relationship where. That kind of stuff, I wouldn't mind it. Like if my partner was like, I want you near when I'm on the toilet, I could do for number one, for, for doing number one. I mean, I, I, can, I, I can get it, the closeness. <laughs> but so when she, because I heard this, and when she was saying it, I just thought, oh, she's joking because it's, it's a thing some people have, that feeling of, oh, we could even go to the restroom together. Like, we're so close, we could even use the restroom together. Some people have that feeling. But, so, I, I was thinking, okay, it's a joke. Like, making kind of making fun of how silly it is that our minds would even go there, right? I thought it was a joke. Together, and we've only pooped together twice. You Who flushes... Excuse. <laughs> she said. She said. What? Hold on. She said what? Hold on. She. Oh, so shocked by this, folks. It's common knowledge that a family that poops together stays together. We got I'm two sorry. sitting Excuse next to each me. other, and we've only pooped together twice. You Who flushes first? No, no, because I only see. Ma, ma, ma. Look at this. One button. <laughs> is that? Is that? Who looks at a. No, 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 no. contractor another adult in the face yes. and you said we need a bathroom with two toilets next to each other and he and that adult and said okay he laughed and thought i was joking and i was like no i'm not joking exactly folks why would anybody in their right minds joke about something as serious as a being able to poop holding hands with your loved one Anyway, the situation ended up getting a lot of attention over the last few days, and Megan addressed it on Twitter. To clear things up, we pooped once together, and we laughed. Well, 
no, no, no. Megan, we didn't need that clear. To, <laughs> we didn't need the specific number of times. We didn't need that cleared up. What was the purpose of clearing that up? Wait, does somebody understand? What was the purpose? No, no, it wasn't twice. It was only one time. Did we, we didn't, that, did we, we have the, Left and said never again, but he will hang out with me if I'm pooping because we soulmates. And no, 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 no. What? No. That one is even far. That one is too far even for me. That one I legit miss far. him when I'm away from him. And we pee together, Avi. I don't know about you folks, but I'm kind of done with this whole situation. It's way more information than I ever wanted to know about. It's kind of like, hold up, hold up. It's like when Ice-T said that thing about his baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on, let me show you. Okay, so it, it was reminding me of this Ice-T. Um, his wife is still breastfeeding their five-year-old daughter. Now, there's no milk coming out. She said there's no milk coming out anymore. So you're not breastfeeding. You are a human pacifier for a five-year-old. Well, five-year-olds aren't supposed to be sucking on no pacifier. No, 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 not in my house. So look at how Ice-T defends his family's traditions. Everyone to cool it down. After the rapper's wife of 19 years, Coco Austin recently revealed that she still breastfeeds their five-year-old daughter, Chanel, the internet reacted the way the internet does. Now, the Law & Order SVU star is chiming in to defend his wife. He tweets, Newsflash, we feed Chanel food. She just likes to suck mom's boob every now and then. Me too. Alrighty Sir. then. The 63-year-old's <laughs> comment follows Coco's admission that... Sir. That was not the clarification. <laughs> Baby. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It is reminding me of, of like when, um, it's reminding me of when Aston, Ashton and Mila talking about they don't bathe. Now, apparently they also don't bathe their kids very often, but they themselves as adults, they don't bathe often and they was defending themselves and they was like, oh, for clarification, it's three times a week. Okay. Not once a month. <laughs> like, it's like, that's not the kind of clarification we were asking for. Yeah. So all this comes after the two famously got flack in July for revealing how often they bathe their children during an episode of Dak Shepard's Armchair Expert podcast. If you can see the dirt on them, clean them. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no point. When I had children, I also didn't wash them every day. Like, I wasn't the mm. parent that bathed my newborns ever. But Ashton and Mila aren't alone. Dax and his wife, Kristen Bell, defended their pals, sharing during an appearance on The View that their own kids, eight-year-old Lincoln and six-year-old Delta, have a similar bathing routine. We bathe our children every single night. Uh, prior to bed is like the routine. And then somehow they just started going to sleep on their own without the routine. And by George, we had to start saying like, hey, when's the last time you bathed them? Yeah, we it, forget. Sometimes five, six days goes <laughs> along. I mean, they don't smell, so. But Kristen didn't exactly agree with her hubby there. Well, That's right. they do. <laughs> I'm a big fan of waiting for the yeah. steak. Okay, Once you catch a whiff, yes, that's, mm -mm. that's biology's way no, of letting no, you know no, no, you need no. to clean it up. <laughs> Weird. No. I don't know what's up with these celebrities. And <laughs> listen, the <laughs> these celebrities going to do what they do. Us peasant folk, we going to shower on the regular <laughs> and we're gonna bathe our children before the stink we're gonna um <laughs> use the restroom individually um and we we're not gonna give clarifications of how everybody in the family want to suck on the titty every now and then like <laughs> that's what us peasant folk <laughs> gonna stay on <laughs> and moving out of youtube they may it's just like who asked the clarification made it worse. <laughs> no. I made a huge announcement yesterday. YouTube to stop making year-end rewind videos. Oh, no, folks. We're losing YouTube rewind. How? That YouTube needs to stop doing that. I mean, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Every single year, 
YouTube gets roasted. The YouTube community roasts YouTube for the rewind. Even one year they did, um, they did it kind of like how they used to do it, which was like in the first YouTube rewinds, it was literally just a lady saying, it's the end of the year. Let's celebrate our top YouTube hits. Remember this one? And they'll just play like the video. Oh, <laughs> and good times with the family include this video clip right here. And that was YouTube Rewind. Nobody had a problem with it. It was like, okay, makes sense. And also we understood YouTube is trying to grow. This could be a, a great video to show to um, advertisers. You know what I'm saying? But now YouTube is, you know, YouTube. Um, so the advertisers don't really need to see it. Everybody knows what YouTube is. Everybody knows you can buy ads on it. YouTube is now with Google. And and YouTube Rewind started becoming, oh, we're doing it for the creators, for the creators to celebrate. But if the creators are roasting you every time you do it, it's like, no, it's time to stop. And they really tried it that one year. They just tried to make it like the old ones. Like, here's a popular video. Here was the most popular video. Here was the most liked video. And they really tried it. And everyone's like, you know, you tried. Like, this is nice, but can you just give it up? <laughs> Can you just give it up? Because it's just giving problematic all around. Because there's people like, hey, you know, there's an issue with how minority creators are being treated versus non-minority creators. You know, there's an issue here and there's an issue here. And this YouTuber was in a disgusting scandal. And why are you celebrating them? And it was just, it was like, you know what, YouTube, could you just not anymore? How are we so supposed to meme on the video that's meant to meme on every single meme that happened that year? I mean, if YouTube Rewind didn't exist, do you think anything even remotely close to this would have ever been produced? Yeah, it's Rewind time. Will Smith will no. never... I don't know how... How many years? Was that two years ago? Like this? <laughs> I can never get... Yeah. And Fortnite... Mark ass Bromley. I can't get that out of my head. Like that, that, that one was really, but that one was, that one was. Never give a performance like this ever again. YouTube says it is not abandoning the project because of the widespread criticism it has received on many recent efforts, but because its platform has become so massive that it is impossible to encapsulate its vastness and diversity within a minute's long compilation. I am genuinely. Okay. Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. So. They start, they start realizing there's just so many, like, if we really just did the most liked, it's just going to be all the same people. And, um, if we start doing from other countries, it is just too much. And it's like, okay, why did you leave out? Did it? Why did you leave out? Did it? So sad, folks. I can't believe the internet will never see moments like this ever again. <laughs> Oh, that the memories cool. we're no longer going to make together. You know who really needs to be in this rewind video? Tell me, Lily Singh. Please preach to me. I love it when you do that. I'm so proud of this community. I wonder oh, if she's girl. still proud of this community. Anyway, folks, it's kind of sad to see rewind get canceled like this because even though a couple... And then we find out the next year that she actually hates the community. <laughs> she, she said, Gabby Hanna said in one of her videos, I'm not like you. I'm not like you regular YouTubers. I don't belong here. Girl, you ain't proud of nothing. You ain't proud of this All community. All the videos weren't the best. At the end of the day, it was something that the entire YouTube community and the internet could come together and use to discuss the events that happened in the last year. Now, of course, it's hard to encapsulate everything that happens on the internet because it's so big and so much is happening all the time. But I do think that it was a very successful at capturing at least one corner of the internet. And think of the rewind memes. One, yeah. What are we going to do without the like, rewind memes? And speaking of canceling, Trisha Paytas recently announced that they're canceling their podcast. This was honestly going to be my last one because I just don't feel, um, I don't, I don't feel motivated to do much these days and, um, it's mostly out of anxiety. I'm sorry to hear that, Trisha, but just one quick question. What were you doing over here? You really couldn't have edited that out? 
takes literally two seconds. And in more Trisha Paytas news, uh, Tana Mojo explained why the episode of a podcast with Trisha got removed. Everyone keeps coming for me on this. People keep flagging it, so it got removed. It's still up on Spotify. I never deleted it. I think I know exactly who did it, folks. His name starts with Snitch and it ends with Star. He's known for reporting a lot of stuff, Is allegedly. And speaking of why reporting, look, apparently photos posted... look like that and always be coming for how other people look and he bawled like that. ...by James Charles, Jeffree Star, and Austin McBroom to Instagram got this animal handler in trouble with the feds. Jeffree Star, James Charles, monkeying around gets feds on animal handler's ass. You know, this picture says a lot, especially when you consider the contrast of James Charles having a huge smile on his face and the baboon looking like he's about to lose his shit. Jeffree Star, James what? Charles, Austin McBroom, and other influencers got way too close with a couple of monkeys, at least according to federal authorities who've reprimanded the animal's handler for allowing it. Don't get me wrong, folks, this is pretty messed up, but I feel like there are uh, other so things scared. that James Charles you has know, done that the feds could have been looking at. Anyway, folks, moving on from James Charles to the guy who thought he needed a slice of humble pie the size of the Empire State Building, Shane Dawson. He recently returned to YouTube after not posting for nearly two years. Hi. <laughs> I learned piano during my break. <laughs> Kidding, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> no, I learned a lot about myself. Oof. Um, hi. Hi. I don't know how to do this. I haven't filmed a video in uh, almost two years. I mean, that's pretty understandable, especially when you consider that the last video he posted before his break was an apology that only ended up making things worse for him. Anyway, folks, Shane later talked about his return to YouTube while giving a tour of his new house in Colorado. This was here when we went to the open house, and I loved it, but I never... It's so interesting how all of these YouTubers are downsizing, Special, especially these controversial ones. They're all downsizing. They're all moving. Tati move. What's Jeffree Star move? Uh, this, this boy move. A lot of them are moving. Um, I just find that really interesting. I wonder, I wish I could peep at their finances and see like, why did you, why did you get something that you couldn't maintain in the first place? Was it just, was it just, you know, the thrill of the money? Like you never had money before. It's exciting. You can buy whatever you want type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so curious how I, I wish I can understand better how these people are living, how they're thinking. Um, we're actually friends. If I didn't actually read it, and then, like, after we moved in, I saw PewDiePie made a video making fun of it. In this house, we laugh a lot. We can't even. Dude, I would I'd be like, all right, done. Not This house is not for me. Eh? PewDiePie does understand that you can like, take I'm stuff off walls, right? Laugh. Hopefully. I hope he does. In this house, we laugh a lot. We count our blessings. We say, I'm sorry. Yes, we do. Don't worry, I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> oh gosh. We make, make we make mistakes. Uh huh. Yes, we do. I don't really know how to react to this section. It's so awkward. We forgive quickly. How about you get to that? Ah, <laughs> uh, good luck with that, Shane. The internet isn't really known for being a forgiving place, especially Twitter. They don't let go of anything. I did TikTok and literally, like, I loved it for a week. And then I got canceled and I couldn't go on it anymore. Girl. I was here for the Shane, for the Shane TikTok era. Hold on, hold on. Let me just show you. It, it was just so dumb. It was just, it was just random, dumb stuff. Honestly, my kind of humor. Just Wait, dumb, like, just random. <laughs> Here's my justification for pedophilia. I can't. Here's my thing. People have foot fetishes. People have fetishes about, you know, everything. Fine, everybody do your thing. So it's why just, is it when somebody looks at like, and jerks off to it, they can get you, arrested? <laughs> Here's the worst like, part of it. Why are you just watching this kid play a game? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what it what it is. It's just, there's something about it that's just funny to me. Just... <laughs> Just okay. We're pl we're just playing a game while he's <laughs> discussing. Girl. Aw. Fucking pedophile. Shame, shame, y'all. Holy. Shame, shame, y'all. I, I was pedophile. Okay. <laughs> I was here for it. Did the same thing with Gabby Hanna. I, so yeah, if Shane got on TikTok around that time, <laughs> he, he, no, he, he couldn't because his name is Shane. If he posts something, he's writing Shane. Everything is Shane, meaning the TikTok algorithm is going to push anything with Shane to his For You page and he's just going to get this. And <laughs> no, TikTok was not for him during that time. <laughs> 
every time I'd swipe, it would be like, and then I'd swipe up and it'd be like, Shane Dawson needs to kill himself. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just get back to that whip. Well, that's TikTok for you. That and people lip syncing iPhone ringtones. Am I the only one getting videos like that on my For You page? Mm -hmm kind of freaking me out. Anyway, later on in the video, Shane addresses this whole cancellation in a more serious manner, and here's a few highlights from that. I had made a lot of growth before I got canceled. The last five or six years. Here's the thing. You made a lot of growth, but the bullshit was still left up on your page. You didn't delete those videos. You didn't delete that merch. So it's like, obviously you grew, like, it was obviously you were a different person, but not different enough to make sure that worst person is removed from your brand and your channel. In and out of therapy, dealing with stuff. I feel like I grew as a person. I feel like I learned a lot. I would never say or do any of those jokes, any of those things ever that I did back then. Well, good for you, Shane. But at the end of the day, folks, I don't think anybody has any choice whether or not they could uh, actually get away with doing jokes like that nowadays. But to be honest with you, jokes like that have always been unacceptable. I mean, people like Francesca Ramsey yes. called out Shane Dawson years ago and got attacked by his the, fans for doing it. And I can't deal with the people who talk about it was a different time. It wasn't. <laughs> the, the only difference is now you pretend that you give a damn about people's opinions who look like me now you're gonna pretend that you care that's the difference and you can even go as far back as 2014 when zachary kento literally removed his name from a project with shane dawson because he didn't agree with the content and when shane dawson was making movies and he was trying to hire actors and the producer was, and shane was like why are the actors how come we don't have our actors by now and the producer was like well shane they don't want to when, we, when they found out it was a Shane movie, they didn't want to act in your movie. It's like, why? Why wouldn't they want to? Well, you know, the kind of content that you post is just, they don't want to be associated with that. Oh my gosh. They would be, they should feel lucky to even have a job to audition for. Shane used to have a very nasty, nasty attitude. It, it a gross attitude. But even back then, professional, his content was seen as bad enough that professional actors refuse to be in his movie because they do not want to be associated with this kind of content. Also, there were news articles being written about Shane and how problematic his content was even back then. So I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear when people say it was a different time. It actually wasn't. There were plenty of people who were talking about how bad and how problematic Shane's videos were how problematic youtube.com was for pushing his content out into the algorithm, making it more popular. That was a point of discussion. The difference is those kids who were kids watching Shane's videos who didn't understand that it was bad, they were not reading news articles. They were not engaging in discourse with adults who had an issue with it. Now those kids are teenagers and young adults and um, midlifers. What do you call it? What do you call people who, you know, they, they have a life, they have mortgages and stuff. You know what I mean? And now they're able to be like, oh, that wasn't good. That, that's, that's what the difference is, is more people are adults. <laughs> there are more adults and older people commenting on this stuff whereas before it was just children and you didn't care about nothing but the money youtube didn't care about nothing but the money because youtube was trying to grow this whole thing of oh yeah racist jokes were okay back in the day they were never okay the only reason why somebody did blackface was because they wanted to be edgy they wanted to do Ex what other exactly. people exactly that was the point the point was it's not okay that's why you were doing it because you were an edge lord. It's edgy. You were you were making fun of something that you know is not appropriate. And there was an audience for that back then. I mean, honestly, there's still an audience for it. It's just more people don't find that acceptable and more professional spaces acknowledge it's not acceptable do they wanted to be offensive because at one point the only way that some people could be funny was if they were offensive but folks i feel like over the last few years 
society in general has learned that you don't need to be offensive to be funny. In fact, it's way funnier if you can be relatable. It was a weird thing where like, I felt like I got to a place where I was proud of what I was making on YouTube. Proud That's an interesting observation. The comedy has shifted from being offensive to being relatable, especially with this Gen Z, like millennials, their humor was already like that. And somehow the Gen Z is taking that relatability humor and just like pushing it. Proud of my personal life, proud of who I was becoming. Like I felt like I was growing up and I was excited about the next chapter. And then it felt like everything went spiral down and then I got canceled. If Shane Dawson's story means anything, it's that you can't run from your past and the person that you are may not necessarily be the person who you currently are, but no matter how much you change, you will never be able to divorce yourself from who you once were, especially on the internet, which much like an elephant never forget. Part Especially when you don't delete the videos and remove the merch. He was upset because I was like, I made so much growth and now I'm being canceled over things from the past. And that's not me anymore. But that forced me to really not just push things away and really face everything head on and realize that that was me and yeah. that is me. But I can learn. <laughs> that, that's the intention. That's why, that's why people kept bringing it up because they wanted you to face it head on. They didn't want you to say, I'm not that person anymore and brush it away. We wanted you to face it, to lay in the bed that you had made, to look at that bed. Look at how you jiggy jaggy the corners. That was Learn from it. Well, thank goodness that Shane Dawson learned from all this. I mean, can you imagine if he made a comeback video in blackface while kissing a 13 year old fan? The internet would have completely fallen apart. And I feel like I'm so happy it happened. So grateful that I got canceled because it really changed my life. It showed me what I care about. It showed me what matters. It showed me I, I don't need to be on YouTube all the time. I don't need to be stressed about what's next. I don't need to be trying to think of the next idea, the next whatever, to be happy. It's good to see Shane Dawson talking about something like this because this is actually something that a lot of creators struggle with. It can be the source of a lot of anxiety. And honestly, I often feel like there's a little bit of a stigma around creators admitting that they don't want to be creative all the time or that they want to prioritize other things because there's such a hustle mindset around around a creator culture and mm. just being a creative person in general, you constantly feel like you have to be pumping things out and social media algorithms do a you great do. job at reinforcing that mindset. And it goes without saying that even you beyond do. the algorithms. Whether, whether you're in, whether you're YouTube, TikTok, whether you're social media or traditional, you do have to keep pumping stuff out. Why do you think Doja Cat is now having a little mental breakdown? <clears throat> she was, she's been nonstop. Like literally every award show, Doja Cat is there giving her all, giving performance, giving looks, giving dance, giving stage presence, giving vocals, giving uh, rapping skills, breath control, giving aerobics, giving uh, acrobatics, giving staging, giving set design, giving costume design. Nonstop, and she's been nonstop for like the past two years. You know what I mean? And you have to do that. <clears throat> How did Beyonce keep getting bigger and bigger despite all the haters? Despite, well, Beyonce can't really sing her voice. It's not that melodic. Uh, Beyonce really isn't that good of a dancer. How does she keep going? She, there was a time that every time, no, yeah, every time Beyonce made music, she made like 10 different music videos. She had been doing that consistently for like a decade. Like, not just here's a hit in the music video, here's another hit in the music video. It's literally here's a hit. And here's 10 music videos from the album. <laughs> here's a hit. Here's 10 other music videos. Here's a hit. Here's a freaking movie continuous music video for the entire album. And, and giving performance. And giving, 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 nah, stop, nah, stop, giving, giving, and on tour. It, like, it, Beyonce was nonstop. When you're nonstop like that, you you it cannot be helped. If you're that talented, that pushed, and that hard of a worker, Britney Spears wouldn't be Britney Spears without her work ethic. Michael Jackson wouldn't be Michael Jackson without the work ethic. Like the work ethic. That's what you need to that's what you need, right? If Ariana Grande 
had that same i'm not saying ariana grande doesn't work hard she absolutely does but it's just not the same you know it's not the same caliber she's she's here to give us uh vocals and some in a cute mood right but i think ariana grande would be an even bigger household name if she gave what now doja cat's trying to give and the thing with doja cat is what she's doing now she has to do it for like at least five years i'm not uh you have to do it for at least five years and it's tiring uh that's why we have so much admiration but and for social media it's the same you have to keep get you have to give consistent content like bam 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 like if that's why i'm trying to figure out what kind of content is really good for me that I doesn't stress me out and I can produce. And also people want to see from me in particular, because just because <laughs> renegade, renegade, just because that's what's popping right now, doesn't mean people want to see me do that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's so many things that's popping. I could do cleaning videos. I could do, but uh, I'm not going to edit. I'm going to forget to, to <laughs> record myself cleaning. I could do, I could be that black girl doing wig videos, right? But I don't really like doing wigs. I, I, you know, like there's so many things that you can do to get popping, but that doesn't mean that's what people want to see you do. You, and I'm currently in experimentation mode because I'm trying to see what hits. I notice over the past couple of years, what tends to hit for me. And listen, what hits for me is, Oh, it got a thousand views. Okay. This is a very small channel. If something gets a thousand views, I'm like that hit. <clears throat> if you can find what hits and, and you don't know the, you don't know the formula, it might just be the way I look with the way my voice sounds, the way my video is, the way I'm presenting myself and my thoughts. Maybe like there's just something that for whatever reason, this type of stuff hit for, for you. There's other people where it's like, now this kind of stuff hit. And if you can, okay, let's go with what hits. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's how you can get more city growth. And it's hard. There's a reason why not everybody who wants to do YouTube is really killing YouTube. There's a reason why not everybody who wants to be a millionaire is actually a millionaire. Is it, mm -mm. And let, let, we, let's put aside the socioeconomical, da -da 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 historical reasons, but I'm more talking about how the reality of what you have to do and the nuance in it is so hard. It's <laughs> the reality of what it takes via work ethic and the nuance you have to be able to pick up on. It, it's difficult and not everybody... For, some people try and they realize it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Some people are lucky and they stumble upon it. Like they didn't have to think and analyze the nuance. They just stumbled into it. They just stumbled upon it or they're in a certain situation that made it easier for them. But for us regular folk, if we're trying to get into this new lane that most people will never be in, it, it's a lot. It's just the fact that you can see what everybody's doing all the time can already be anxiety inducing just by comparing that someone else is doing way more than you and that makes you want to create more. So overall, it's not really something that a lot of people are willing to admit. Yeah, I'm not gonna run from my past, but I'm also not gonna stay in it. Like, I'm not just gonna live in there because that I've already come to terms with and I feel like it would be unhealthy for me to just constantly think about it. Look, if somebody's constantly living in the past, then they're not living in the present. And if they're not living in the present, they're not taking the lessons from the past and using it to evolve into the future. And I think that we should all want people to evolve past their past selves into better future selves. And our palate cleanser. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Deaf Noodles. What did you think? Um, surprisingly, this video is 45 minutes. I didn't expect that. I didn't, I, yo, I talk a lot, shoo, shoo. This is really cool though. Like this is, this is allowing me to get stuff off my chest without feeling the pressure of, oh, is this enough to make a full video? And uh, uh. I like this. I don't know. Should I be on Deaf Noodles D? 
and just make videos <laughs> based on whatever Def Noodles posts. He posts on a daily. He posts every day. He posts every day. Is it worth it? Do y'all want to see? I need, I need the comments. I need the comments. I need the comments. I need the likes. I need the feedback. Let me know what you think. And now I'm going to upload this video. I appreciate it. I would love to hear your thoughts on the subject matter that he talked about too. And now I need to figure out how to do this wig. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see how it looks. Let's see how it looks real quick. Okay. <laughs> how do I look with blonde? Oh, this is... <laughs> this is kind of... this. The wig is actually really cute. How they cut, how... No matter what direction you do the hair, it lays so cute. So this is a really cute wig. It's just, how do I make it, you know, wearable? How do I make it not look? You see how it look plastic? You know what I mean? How, I don't know. We'll figure it out in this video I'm supposedly editing. Um, I am in the process of, we are in the process of getting this house together still, but now we have a little bit more to work with to get furniture we need and stuff like that. Clean it up, get into a routine, figure it out. Like how, how do we, what's our daily routine? Like what's, what's up, what's up? Um, and I found a a dance program that's literally going to take me from not a professional dancer to a professional dancer. And I'm so excited. So I'm, tr I'm honestly training for that as well. So I want to start making, um, dance videos about this journey, like being a grown ass woman, becoming a professional dancer. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that look like? I don't know. I'm literally going to be experimenting, throwing crap at the wall that I enjoy. Just sharing, literally just sharing things that I wish other people would share. Okay. Thank you for watching for almost an hour. You could have been watching anything else. Did you spend time with me? Share your thoughts below. I really enjoy building this parasocial relationship with y'all. Until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.